the e-fuels we're making are what we call second generation e-fuels. So synthetic fuels or electrofuels or e-fuels have been around for a long time and you know they've been really expensive because the first generation of these fuels uh, use very high temperature, very high pressure uh, processes that, that just cannot get cheap, no matter how much you scale them. Um, and what we've done is we've innovated a second generation of this type. So we use electrochemistry. So you use electrical energy to do what you used to do with high temperature and high pressure. And that has dramatically lowered the cost of these fuels. And that's the main difference. We think cost is incredibly significant here. There's this idea of a green premium that we're supposed to pay more for things that are going to help our climate or or th for things that are new generally. And, and I disagree with that because it assumes that you're stuck with the technologies that are already around you, you already have at your fingertips and it ignores new tech. So second generation e-fuels can cost less than a dollar per liter uh, without subsidy. Um, and that's possible because of how cheap solar and wind electricity have become. Um, especially in the last five to six years, they've gotten very inexpensive. Solar power at its cheapest is one cent per kilowatt hour at utility scale. And so these, these electric fuels, they, uh, they're petrol, diesel, and jet fuel. So essentially all of the liquid transportation fuels we're used to using from fossil fuel, or more recently, um, some waste of fuel or, or, or biofuels have been available. But the electric fuels are unlimited because you, as long as you can continue to build solar and wind capacity, um, you can continue to make these fuels. And if they're the same cost or less, then you can drop them in and replace fossil fuels. And you could do that very quickly. So one thing I would say is that uh, we're having uh, energy security issues right around the world right now, especially in Europe and the UK. And there is a tension between uh, energy security and climate security that somehow we kind of have to choose one or the other. And that's not the case. So if you can make domestically produced carbon neutral e-fuels that are inexpensive, um, then you can have both energy, energy security, but then also you have climate security because you've taken care of your environment. You're not making it worse. You're not making you know, your environment uh, unhealthy. Oh. Rob, one of the keys to this, though, seems to be capturing and storing CO2 in an efficient and cost-effective manner. And we just don't seem to be there yet. How long is this all going to take to make it work in a way that businesses will believe is affordable for them? That's a good point. So if you're going to make a, a hydrocarbon fuel, which is what an e-fuel is, you need to capture carbon from the atmosphere. And, and that's why it's carbon neutral, because when you burn the fuel, the CO2 that goes back to the air is the same that you captured in the first place to make it. And the CO2 capture has been very expensive. And it's because the, the people who've been capturing CO2 have been trying to turn it into a pure CO2 gas in a cylinder. And one of our innovations is that we don't do that. We capture CO2 into water, which is really pretty easy to do. Um, and then we directly in water turn it into the hydrocarbon fuels. So we never turn it into that CO2 in a bottle. And for that reason, our cost of CO2 capture is extremely low. It's less than $40 a ton which is you know, 10 times less than many people are trying to make CO2 in a bottle in purity and pressure. And so that's one of the innovations. As, as far as timeline goes, we're very close to launching our commercial fuel product. Uh, it's been an unusual time the last couple of years in terms of supply chain and, and some other issues. So it's hard to have firm control or timelines, but we're very close to launching. And you know, we can mass produce these containerized power to liquid systems. You can make them in the same techniques you use to make cars. So you can actually have them rolling off an assembly line and you can make a lot of them very inexpensively that way. And I think the soonest we could do mass production would be about three years from now. And you could make enough of these power liquid systems to do about 100 gigawatts of e-fuels per year. And now that's quite a lot. And so if you have to, you have to put in 100 gigawatts of new solar and wind, um, but if you do that, say to about 300 gigawatts, you've, you've got the ability to replace all the fossil fuels in the UK.